I started looking into some of the bigger solar generator units in the market because I think the idea of a completely silent generator that can still run large power loads and never need gasoline is a really cool concept. Whether it's needing to run a portable table saw, to tailgating or camping when the noise of a standard generator would just be irritating. I wanted to make sure that this is going to work the way that I think it will. So what I have done, I have wired everything up temporarily and we're going to do a field test uh, to show you what I have set up. I have our 100 watt panel and that is then wired into 30 watt charge controller which is currently charging which is then feeding our battery from the battery I have wired in our 2000 watt inverter which I think is going to be able to run the tools that I've brought out to test with and I also just has a, a voltmeter right here which looks like right now we're at 12.4 volts um, this will be one of the items that I will be flush mounting into my box later as long as, as well as the outlets um, and switches to be able to use the inverter everything will be mounted into the into the pelican case um, for testing my load i have a 10 inch ryobi portable table saw and i also have a skill saw two and a half horsepower circular saw i'm going to see if i can use both of these tools off of nothing but the solar generator now this is a 100 watt panel we, both of these tools will be pulling much more than 100 watts. Um, this is a 2,000 watt inverter, so this is not a load that we would be able to do sustained. But the situations where I would be using these tools, it would be intermittent use, and that's what the battery's for. The battery should allow us to do the high load capacity when we need it, and then the solar panel should gradually charge that battery back up. If I'm ever needing them out in the field and I have to run them constantly, that's when I would probably lug out the gasoline generator and deal with all the extra noise and hassle that comes with that. Okay. Let's go ahead and plug in our table saw first. Power up our inverter. And start up. Looks like the table falls no issue. Let's go ahead and feed those out. And let's try the skill saw. looks like that looks like that works excellent I'm going to check my battery voltage to see and we are now at 12.3 so we actually did not lose that much voltage let's go through the things just to see what we have first up is the Pelican 620 case this is going to be the case that we package everything into it's a, it's a definitely a large case uh, I wanted to make sure that this case was big enough so that if we have to switch inverters later on um, use different size batteries, whatnot. We have a little bit of flexibility. It's got wheels in the bottom, so you can roll it around, kind of like the airport bus, has a handle on the back. Very rugged case, uh, meets several military specs for, they claim you can't crush, it's dust proof, waterproof. It should be as durable as we need for anything that we're gonna put our generator through. Um, it's got very heavy handles, on either side, that was an important thing to me, as well as a heavy handle on top. It's going to be a little heavy to carry like this. I imagine most of the time you'll be wanting to roll it around, or with a partner, one on each side carrying it by the handle on each side. That may make a useful way to carry this. It's going to be pretty heavy by the time we get both batteries in there. 
It is padlockable as well. Uh, O-ring seals to keep the water out and very thick heavy duty sides. So, that's the case. Next up is the battery. This is the Optima Blue Top Model 8016, I believe it is. This is a AGM glass mat battery. It's the coil wound style. It is a true deep cycle battery, and a deep cycle battery just allows you to get a little bit deeper into the discharge before you're starting to shorten the life of that battery. It also has the ability to be mounted in any orientation. That's something that I thought was very important for my setup because it's going to be going into the case that'll be rolled around either on the wheels, it may at times be laid flat. I didn't want to have to worry about how the case was oriented. We wanted to make sure that the battery would be just fine whether the battery's on its side, on its back, or even upside down, as long as we have it mounted securely so that nothing shorts against our terminals. This battery does not care how it's oriented. Okay, one of the next major components for our build is going to be this Krager 2000 watt inverter. This is actually a 4000 peak wattage 2000 watt continuous unit. It has nice mounting tabs on the bottom. It's fairly compact for the wattage that it has. It's got some large terminals on the back for our wiring. Um, it's got a active fan here for ventilation. The unit that I purchased comes with the uh, wiring with a, a nice fuse holder with fuse, uh, the negative cable. It also comes with a remote power switch. This is something that I really wanted to have. My goal is to be able to have everything remote mounted to the outside and and this remote switch that comes with this inverter unit is definitely a good step in that direction. Okay, the next major component I have is this Renalgy. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Renalgy? Renalgy? It is a the 100 watt solar panel kit and it comes with the 100 watt panel. It's getting on the bigger side of what can be considered portable for sure. Um, but this gives you 100 watts of power uh, you know, in peak sunlight conditions that none of the other solar generators that I've looked into come anywhere closest, close to. Uh, 30 watt tends to be the biggest of the common ones that I've seen. Most of your fold out solar panels, your briefcase, you know, your, your portable panels that are foldable and compact, you're looking at maybe 10 to 30 watts, where this guy will get us 30 watts of power. Now there's nothing stopping you from hooking smaller panels up to the unit if you don't need that kind of power all the time and you just want to have a smaller panel hooked up to it and that's more portable for when you're out in the field. There's nothing wrong with that too. Um, you'll definitely be able to hook multiple size panels up to this unit. 100 watt panel. It has the uh, bus on the back for connecting in to your solar charger. This one came with a couple pigtails for the solar charger unit itself. And then this 30 amp solar charged controller came with it as well. It's not a real fancy unit, it's a fairly basic one, but it will do everything that we need to use it for. It's also, because it is a 30 amp controller, it's pretty expandable. If you wanted to set up multiple panels, um, we would be able to do so. I believe you can run up to four of the 100 watt panels with this in a 12 volt system. Next up, I wanted to be able to charge our system off of standard AC power. This would be good for just keeping it topped off when it's in storage, or if it's you just wanna charge up your batteries and you really don't have a place to be setting the panels out. So we picked up a one and a half amp battery maintainer slash charger. This is just a trickle charger. It will charge very slowly, so it won't be the best situation if your batteries are highly discharged. It's gonna take a very long time to bring it back up. But what it will do is it will bring it up slowly and it will keep the batteries in a healthy voltage for long-term storage. I also picked up a, I believe this is the NoCo Genius brand, but this right here will be going into the outside of our box. Once this is threaded into our uh, enclosure, it'll fit flush and an extension cord will literally just pop right into that, and pop it back up. So it'll be super easy to unplug or re-unplug in. So, the goal being that if you were needing to take this in an in emergency, all you'd have to run over is pull your extension cord out, close up the boot, and you're waterproof and ready to go. I also picked up two of these floodlights, and these floodlights are just LED 
we'll be able to run these for a very long time on our batteries and they will flush mount into our enclosure. I'm going to try to put one of them on the front and one of them on the top. The reason I'm going to do that is so that I can point this one by just turning the case the way we need to point the light. We can aim that light and use that as a work lamp. And the one that will be facing upwards will work very well in, say, like a large tent or pavilion, someplace where you want to be able to cast that light straight up into the air and have it bounce back off of the ceiling. That should serve as good illumination for the area around the unit.